Hi, this is George, and this is going to be day number 30 of my Swatchtober, and my Swatchtober is a compilation of different next techniques that I like to use when I doodle with color. The uh, supplies I'm going to be using, um, normally I would use a little bit of new color twos or watercolor, but today is going to be a bit different. Today I'm going to be using Turner Aquila Gouache. I'm going to be using Permanent Yellow. Permanent Yellow. Um, lemon. Permanent Scarlet. And Permanent Red. The reason uh, why I'm doing these is because someone suggested that I include the circles that I had started with the yellow, and I'm going to include them down here. Now you're saying, but George, this is watercolor. Yes, and it's transparent. I like to include uh, acrylic gouache because it has, it's really opaque, uh, a lot like the Kurotake that I used up here and the gold but and the star okay but when it's dry the aquarium brush acts as a the appearance is a lot different than watercolor and that is opaque and not transparent but also it has a flat finish whereas with watercolor it's very transparent and you can see the white of the paper peeking through. When you use gouache, that the, uh, uh, opa the opacity of gouache and the flatness also offers a kind of different fill for the piece of work that you're experimenting with. I'm going to use a plastic top to have the acrylic gouache put in here. I've got some water. I'll be using somewhat my mechanical pencil. It's a regular number two pencil. And somewhat my kneaded eraser. Not a lot because the pencil work marks when I apply the gouache 
will cover the pen pencil marks, so I don't really need it. I'm going to use a couple of brushes. They're from Mimic or Creative Mark and Princeton, but you can use whatever brushes you want. So let's get started. First thing, I want to work on is some circles. And it, as I said, the pencil marks will probably be covered up by the gouache and won't be visible. First, I'm going to use my permanent lemon yellow. Now, yellow is really translucent regardless of the medium that you're using. What I like to do is have um, a little bit of water I'm going to use the spritzer every so often on the um, gouache so that I can keep it somewhat wet. Or you can apply a little bit more water on your brush. So my way of thinking is to slowly build up your layers of wash. First layer is uh, like a, a wash. And the good thing about gouache, at least with the Turner Acrylic gouache, is it dries rather quickly. And once it's dry, it's permanent. Let's see, a bit more down here. I have a paper towel so I can get rid of most if not all of the color, but the saturation of gouache is a, a lot more intense, so you may have to use more than one water container and these are kind of dry so we can go back in a bit more thick
So I'm going to apply a little bit of spritzing, but away from my paper. Just enough to activate again. And I'm going to add some color to this one here. And I'm going to blend out a little bit. So you can still use acrylic wash as in uh, blending and I'm going to go for another layer of my yellow the more layers you use the more true color will shine through And the more thicker you have the acrylic wash, the more opaque it becomes. Because it's kind of a balancing act, trying to decide how opaque you want your acrylic wash to be, but unlike regular gouache, where you can reactivate it once it's dry, acrylic gouache stays put. I'm going to draw in some more circles. And you can still see a little bit of reflection, at least I can. So I'm going to use my heat tool and I'll be back. So this is my heat tool, tool but you can use um, uh, a hair dryer as well to speed up the process. But if you use a heating tool, make sure that the gouache is away because you don't want to dry it out and have it at the lowest setting. So now I can go in with my pencil and have some more fun getting some water on my brush activating a larger area yeah not yet okay um 
let's go with my permanent yellow, which is a kind of warmer yellow to have some more contrast from the first one. And let's go in with a smaller brush. Again, kind of thin out a little bit. See, so I like the the hint of the background and the contrast of the more opaque layering. And with wash, you can layer as much as you want to change up what's going on. With your painting or your doodle. Now, the reason why. I started with my yellow is because it's dirty now, but if I were to say have started with uh, red, it would have been much more dirtier. And this is my second water. That way, when the rinsing is done from the first clean through, I can use my brush again and it doesn't muddy up the water as much. So, I don't know if I said this before, but um, someone commented asking me if I was going to include, include some of the yellow circles in the hair. I think I did, but what I want to say is even though I had no, uh, no intention of including that in here, the the suggestion was kind of cool, cool and challenged me to come up with 
a way of doing it. So thank you for the suggestion. I spritzed the palette a bit again. So I'm going to go in with another layer and have it on top of some, but not all. Because I still like the effect of a single layer of the acrylic gouache. Not a huge amount of difference, but you can see some. It's more pronounced for me as I paint it. It might not be that way for you. So what like um, watercolor, you can introduce a bit of blending so I'm going to use my permanent scarlet try not to have too much paint and that's normal as far as the binding, not to worry, just go with the flow. So I blew, blow dried it a little bit and I'm going to go in with the kind of larger one, which was number four. To make a kind of an orange. I'm going to go back in my sketch and add some orange. And one here, kind of hiding. So 
I apply a little bit of the orange that I just made. I'm going for a second layer and make it more opaque. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer again and I'll be back. So I'm going to go in with more yellow lemon and further change up the value of my orange. And we'll see what happens. I like it. Again, you're just playing around and seeing what happens. And if you don't like what it's turning out to be that's okay because the next time do something different So, as you can see, the darker background for here, with a, a couple of layers of acrylic gloss, it was able to cover. So, as you can see, the darker wash on the background with a couple of layers of acrylic wash with the yellow and if you're familiar with yellow you know it's very transparent but with the acrylic wash it has no problem in covering up and completely obliterating the, well, that's probably the, the wrong word, but you get the idea. So it's, it dries more matte than the watercolor which is like I said, I like the contrast. So what do you think? Did I do it justice as far as this area goes? I'm going to f play it around with my Acrylic wash, that's a hard word for me to say. Sorry about that. But anyway, 
I like the effect of the juxtaposition of the opacity with the transparency of watercolor. So, hope you enjoyed your day with me a bit and got inspired to play around with gouache. Remember, regular gouache, you won't be able to layer like I did here because as soon as you layer it, it changes it up totally. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today and got inspired to have some fun. Now you can do this with acrylics or you can kind of do it with um, watercolor. If you know you're going to do this with the watercolor, plan a bit more that way lay in the yellows, the circles, and after the circles are dry, go in with your darker background. Anyway, um, have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be kind to others and be, be creative. Bye.